improving the electoral process. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, in my opinion, it's one of the surest way, in combination with other things, of ensuring accountability and political order. Because if we get to the point in which if people do not deliver ex post on their electoral promises, you punish them at the polls, it's going to send a strong signal. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, elections in Africa, stemming corruption and encouraging democracy. There are 53 countries on the African continent, and 27 of them will hold elections this year. Independent elections are a positive sign of budding democracy, but some elections continue to be rigged, bought, or stolen by unscrupulous governments or corrupt leaders. Fellow Melvin Ayogu takes a closer look. The way things are going in the world, most people are leaning towards democracy um, and dictatorship as opposed to monarchy, because you can have a monarchy that is uh, merely ceremonial, um, as you have in England, and that is still practice full accountability uh, of the government answerable to the people. And um, not just accountability, but a government that will not also prey on the people. Because that's a very important distinction that sometimes people forget, that you need political order as well as accountability. Uh, almost like the, the, in the military they talk about command and control. Uh, you you, you uh, command the government by installing the government, but they can turn around and oppress you, <laughs> and you have no remedy. So that's just as bad. Um, of course, this means that education is very important. Democracy alone cannot stand. You also need to educate the people because they were the ones that will try to build institutions that uh, restrain the excesses of government. Well, Melvin, the electoral process in many African countries has been troubled for years. Why is that? You have this system of almost cronism, dependency that is created even before the election, either through uh, the uh, chiefs or some person who despises uh, the who disperses the largest uh, when it's time to vote. They tell you know where to put your thumbprint or you know where to drop the ballot. And we have a way of watching because after the vote, if you don't vote right, a lot of things are going to go away. Um, I think it's one of those um, uh, strategies of uh, divisibility um, and disorganization of your opponent. That's how governments win. So you have uh, collective deprivation and selective appeasement or benefits. So uh, you deny everybody water, for instance, and uh, if you vote for me, you get to drink water. <laughs> uh, the choice is clear. It's all up to you. And so what kind of uh, freedom is that? It, you know, so you need to empower people so they can get their water and they can vote how they want. Freedom is expensive. What impact does a government that comes into power through the electoral process have on development and growth? There is no clear winner, whether democracy or dictatorship, in terms of uh, economic growth or even development, because you can have benevolent dictators who are able, and uh, you see some of that in the Middle Eastern countries. And uh, my favorite is always the Emirates in the uh, United Arab Emirates and even Qatar uh, in terms of the progress they've made. Uh, there are other uh, uh, monarchies or dictatorships that haven't fared well. Equally, you can fight democracies, whether they are procedural democracy uh, rather than substantive. Uh, they go through the vote, they go through the motions, but they don't deliver to the people. Um, and there are complications even in the way that the business of government under democracy is run that sometimes can prevent some of those policies that are growth, uh, development enhancing from uh, emerging. You know, so each uh, comes with its own set of problems. Well, what's next? What's the best step forward for Africa? A lot of work needs to, uh, to uh, go into the voter registration, maintaining an appropriate database. And that also means uh, such things, uh, basic things, if you like, and the U.S. would basic as national identity printing and authentic identity cards. Because sometimes when you have a system, the system is subject to gaming. And as you said, having uh, um, a credible democracy is very expensive. So a lot, some of the foreign aid could go into setting up institutions that, uh, um, that police that electoral process. Yeah. So, that, so those kinds, and of course, 
the party competition is also important. We always uh, pay a, lo a lot of attention on the inter-party competition, but we never pay attention to intra-party competition. How do these uh, flag bearers emerge? You know, and there are some parties where convicted criminals have actually made, it, <laughs> made their way to the platform. Maybe eventually they don't get to run, but the fact that they could actually be candidates, what kind of signal does that send in a society where you could do anything and it doesn't matter? And, uh, poli so it makes people think that politics is for crooked people, and it shouldn't be because the business of government is too important. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.